Hi guys, it's Sherry. Today I'm going to show you how I made this exact piece. And you can see this is a real stone here. And I absolutely love the side here. So I left that all open. Now in the video, it's going to start basically right off from a point that I normally wouldn't start my videos on and that's only because I lost the very first half of it. So I somehow deleted it basically is what I'm saying. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you quickly how I did the very beginning just in case you are wondering. So I ended up just taking a piece of clay, rolling it out to my thickest setting and then I cut it kind of to shape. And then I would take this and build this up around my piece and you'll see that part, but I left all this open and on the back, I have a triangle. So I just took a regular cutter, triangle cutter, and I'm just going to use this for example. And then I just cut that out, placed it on the back of my piece, and then wrapped it around and kind of went from there. So that's how you will start kind of placing your piece together. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm just going to take my clay, start building up around it. And remember, nothing at this point has to be perfect. It could be messy looking. It does not matter. Just start building up around your piece. Because everything could be smoothed out and made nice looking afterwards. And I know I'm going to kind of taper down a bit, so I'm going to kind of push down. But I really want a lot of the stone to show if possible. So this part is just gorgeous. I love this side. So we are keeping this completely free of clay, just the clay on the bottom. That is it. Now I'm just kind of smoothing and making sure all my clay becomes one piece. And now I'll kind of start trimming to see how I want to do this. Now push down. And I'm kind of rolling my thumb a little bit to get my edging on there nice. And your clay will pull away from your piece and that's okay. Let me lift it and just check it out. to get I like to work on my tiles so I can easily take things off and on and move my piece around very easily so this I can spin and I really like that so far okay so now I am going to edge around a little bit so I'm going to get my clay and I'm actually going to get a different color because I'm going to paint all this, but I'm going to get a different color so you can really see what I'm doing with these noodles. So I'll just get some of my white scrap here. And I'm going to soften this up. This way, you guys can see all the detail of what I am doing. Okay. So once you have your clay nice and soft, you can start making your noodles. When I do these type of stones, I don't always have an idea in mind. I just kind of create as I go and um, see what I get out of it. Now, 
I'm gonna make that a little skinnier. I like my edging to be nice and skinny so it's not necessarily sticking up too far off the stone. And I'm putting it partially on the stone, but I'm also putting it on the clay because that is what is going to help it stick. It will not stick on just your stone. You have to put it on the clay for it to stay on. Otherwise, <clears throat> after you bake it, it'll just fall right off and not work. So I'm gonna cut it off right there. And I'm just gonna kind of flatten it down on the edge. And I'm pressing down on this, but I'm not pressing too, too hard because I don't want it to be completely flat. Now let's see what we can do swirl wise. Hmm. Let me put this into a point and start making this skinny as well. I want to kind of do something similar to this area so this has like a you know ruffled look and that's kind of what i'm thinking i might do to go along with the stone so i'm going to kind of just go right over and then i'm going to take my tool here and i'm going to kind of Put it in place where I want it to give it a little bit more of a ruffled area. And I will just kind of follow that. Get that point right with the other point. And always use your fingers to press down the clay once you're happy where it is. I'm going to take this and just follow that little tiny section there. Get it off my finger. Put that up. And kind of go right with it. There we go. Take this little piece here. Oops. Oh, it's giving me a hard time. There we go. And I am going to kind of rough up these little noodles because I don't want them to be perfect. You see how this is all, you know, kind of splattered looking? That's what I want to do with these noodles. So 
I'm gonna make them splattered. And the nice thing is, once you do this, if you don't like it, you can take your stone out and start over. That's what I love about working with real stones and clay, is nothing is permanent until you make it permanent. So if I do this and I decide, ugh, I don't like that, that came out terrible, I start over. So don't be afraid to try something and start over if you have to because I do it all the time and I'm sure lots and lots of us um, clay artists do that. Okay, so I am pretty pleased with the look of that so far. I am going to just add a couple little noodles here. Come on, I need my tool. I'm gonna kind of add that there. This is almost like painting with clay when, when you spread it out. And then down here, I'm gonna try to make more of like one of these like little dirty looks. Like, I don't wanna say dirty, but like the water. So I'm gonna take my clay, my clay. And I'm just gonna put little sections here. So just put little bits and pieces. And then I'm gonna take my tool here and I'm gonna start kind of pushing this down. And we're gonna start mushing this, so to speak. Almost reminds me of like speckle. I have no idea how I'm going to paint this yet either. So as this is in the oven, I'm going to have to rack my brain how I want to paint this. Do I want to do it all silver? Do I want to do it gold? Do I want to put color in it? So these are all things that I'm going to have to think about after I create the piece. So now I'm going to take my blade and just kind of Make sure everything is nice and flat against it, uh, against my piece. Kind of really look at it, make sure everything's the way that I like it. It's definitely different, unique. Okay, and like I said, I'm gonna leave all this alone because I really want this to be the focal point on that side. And press down on this just to kind of make it part of the piece like the rest of it. All right. So now I'm going to put this in the oven at 275 for a half hour and then we'll come back and figure out how we are going to paint this up and turn this into a piece of art. Okay guys, so my piece is out of the oven. It looks beautiful so far and what I'm going to do is do a quick sand job real fast and I am just going to use my nail file because all I need to do is just kind of clean up edges. There's not much more that I'm going to have to do because I want to leave this rough. So just do a quick little sand job. And make sure the white is off the back here. 
do a quick little job on the top just to make sure it's not overly rough. And then just brush it off, make sure all that dust is off your piece. And I did decide I am gonna do silver and then I'm gonna try to add a little bit of green and blue. I don't have these colors, but I am gonna add some white to it and just put in little spots of area. If I don't like it, then I'm just gonna go over it all in silver. But my first coat is gonna be silver. And I never worry about if I get my um, stone with paint because that just I could wipe off very simply and I will do two coats of the silver make sure you get your inner edges here okay so the back I will do again last I'm going to focus more on the front right now What I would like to do is, I'm gonna get one of my pads here. I'm gonna take some white. And some green. And I'm going to mix this and try to get a very light green. And I like that. That's pretty light. Try to get some of that paint off. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. I'm going to put a little green in this blue. See if I can get it more that color. Yeah, that seems to be working. So my idea is to kind of blend the colors and see if we can kind of get them to blend nicely. I never do color on my gems my real gemstone stuff but I figured I would try it and see what happens so I'm just getting my smaller one and I'm gonna kind of go right in the middle and try to blend those together my darker blue up here and then hopefully a little bit of that silver when I'm done and I scuff it up a bit will pop through and now we're going to try to do the same thing over there let me get my green All right, so I'm gonna let this fully dry and see what it looks like when it's dry. All right, so my piece is dried and I love the colors on this, but I want to make sure I have some silver popping through. So I'm gonna take my file and I am just gonna kinda scrape at this and brush off some of this color so not a lot just a little bit 
because I just want just a tiny bit of silver popping through. Okay, so that's what I got. And I'm gonna get a little bit down here. Carefully, well, I actually wanna get a little bit more down here. because I like all those little specks that I made. So I wanna make sure that those show. And I'm gonna get my silver paint again. And this time, I'm gonna take a tiny brush. Maybe my, so it's a small brush. And then I'm just gonna carefully put my silver on these areas. You could also get a little bit on your finger and kind of go over those areas as well. But I really like to just use the brush because this way I know I'm not going to get too much on the color. This part, I am going to use my finger because all this stuff is raised. So I can just dab it in the areas that I want it. And I know it's not going to go on the color. So that's how that is going to look. And I gotta say, I love this. This came out so much nicer than I thought it was going to be when I decided to add the color. Let me make sure. I'm just gonna go over and double check and make sure I got all my white. I don't want no white popping through. I want it to be the silver. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry a few minutes and then we'll clean up the stone. All right, so now I'm gonna start cleaning up my stone. And I like to just take a tool and kind of scrape off the paint initially that's close to the edge. And I'm gonna take my towel and then I will just clean around it and all the paint should easily come right off. The reason I scrape around the edges is because I don't want to rub the paint off if I touch the edge. So this kind of helps avoid that. Okay, so here you can see I rubbed some of the paint off. So because I don't have any more of that colored paint, I'm just going to add a little bit of silver to that area. Slowly wipe that. Okay. And I'm going to get my back here. Okay, take a Q-tip, have it a little bit wet, and then just go in there, and that paint will come off. So that's what we have so far and I am very happy with that. I think it looks beautiful. So my next step is I want to put something here that I can hang this. So now I just got to decide how do I want to actually hang it. I think that's going to look really nice on there. Or 
Let's see. I don't want to go too fancy. That's too fancy. Okay, so this is going to be our winner. So I have my drill and I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of mark and see where exactly I want this. They want this kind of down for far because I don't need a lot of opening because I'm going to use a small chain. So about right there. So let me make sure I got it centered. That's a really small, let's see, will that work? Yes, okay, so I will not need my other one. And there we go. So my last thing that I wanna do is make sure I protect all my paint is put my glaze on. So I'm just gonna use my gloss glaze. And you just brush right over. And you can get right over here. I put this on first because I like to hang my pieces to completely dry. This way I could do the front and back right away. So I just work right around my um, clasp. I absolutely love this color on this uh, piece. I never do color on my real gemstone stuff and I always do the faux metal look with the paint but this is beautiful I really like these paints a lot the colors are just always so stunning to me I'm gonna get the edge very carefully inside here and now I will let it dry Okay, so my piece is dry, and look how beautiful. This came out so nice, guys. I am super happy with this. So now all I have to do is add my chain. And I chose a larger chain, because um, I think it'll fit perfect with the bale, instead of a tiny, tiny little one. And all I did was I cut it to size. I'm going to put my pendant on. Let me clean this off. And now I will just add my clasp and jump rings. So put your jump ring on, close it on the one side, open up your other one, put it on, add your clasp, and then make sure it's closed all the way. And there you go. There's your beautiful pendant and look how nice that you can see the side. So you see a lot of detail on this one. And I love the color combination with the blue, the silver, and the green. It goes really, really nice with this stone. And then obviously I just love having the backs open so you can see the back of the stone. 
So I really hope you guys enjoyed creating this piece with me. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.